I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk about Microsoft Groups. Uh, Microsoft Groups are a bit of an oddball in the Office 365 environment because it uh, is slowly growing into a very competent platform, but it's rather hidden. As you see, it's not um, among the online apps that we have here, but rather you find it inside Mail, although it is technically a part of SharePoint. So to find it, you go to your Mail, and here under the folders section, you have the groups, and there you can uh, create or discover groups. And you create one of those and choose a name for it. I'm going to create the um, IT team. As you see, this creates an email address also. And I can select the privacy, uh, public or private, and then select the language. And I can also select to send copies of all group messages to the inbox of each user. So this is a simple way to create a discussion. What's happening now is that we're actually creating a site collection, a SharePoint site collection with most of the, of the benefits of a site collection, but with a lot simpler UI on top of it. So I'm going to invite Antonio here also to this group, and then we are done. Now, as you see, this group was created very, very fast. That's one benefit over a site collection. And also, it's very, very simple to use. You simply can create new conversations, new CRM system, for example. We can have a discussion about that. And then you simply send that, and that gets sent to the team members. And here's the uh, conversation. And um, of course, you can reply and you can like. Uh, so it's a very, very simplistic conversation there. Furthermore, you have a calendar. And that takes you into, you see, your own calendar and the IT team calendar side by side. So if I create a new, new item here, save that right there, you see that it's in blue. So that's actually in my calendar. If I switch over to the IT team calendar there, there you go. You see, I see the uh, IT team. So if I create something there, test two, uh, that's being created in the IT team uh, calendar. And I see that in my own calendar also showing up. So even if I switch over to my own calendar like that, you'll see that the test two is there. So there you see, I clicked away the IT team and I still see that appointment from, from my team. So that's rather powerful. As you see, I'm all out of that group experience now. I'm into my calendar, but if I go back a few steps there, I will end up back in my team. There's my group mail. So that was the conversations in the calendar. The files are very easy. As you might recognize from OneDrive, you have this very, very simple UI, which doesn't support any views. It's just a list or tiles. Let's switch tiles and that those views. Very, very simplistic. However, you can browse a library and this takes you to the full SharePoint experience. We'll get back to that, but I'm going to click on the other things here. Notebook, simple a OneNote notebook that is stored in this group, and you can add information on that, and that gets shared, of course, with the IT team. So I won't go into the details of that, but it's good to know that it's there. Now you saw when I clicked back out of my notebook, I got into the SharePoint experience of my groups. This is the same information we're seeing here, but this is the Outlook view of it, and this is the SharePoint view of it. So if I had gone to a browse library, I would have actually gotten to the same UI that we have here. So if I go to the home, there you see it's the same UI. This is the group interface or a team site of the group experience. So there's a lot of overlapping functionality between SharePoint and um, groups, of course. Okay, let's go back and select one more thing that you can do. And these are the connectors. As you see, there are connectors to lots of different third-party applications here. These are not Microsoft-specific things, but a lot of other suppliers that have supplied connectors so you can get updates on interests. Those will show up inside your group experience here also. So a lot of them, I'm not going to go through all of those, but I just want to point out that they're there. 
So now we're leaving the Outlook web app group experience. And let's move on to the team site public group experience or the SharePoint experience or whatever you want to call it. If you're familiar with SharePoint, this will look very familiar. The homepage is based on the new UI. And uh, if I go into my documents, I'll see the same documents, of course. Uh, and I can also go back into classic SharePoint. If I go into my site contents, you'll notice that I can create new uh, lists, pages, document libraries, apps, and subsites to this group site also. And the apps are the full apps including the SharePoint store, which is of course interesting. So this will get almost limitless. Let's go back to the site again and see under site settings, what is there and what's not there. One of the more interesting things that is here is site content types. And uh, of course you have the content type publishing, so you can work with content types here also. And um, if you go into one of the document libraries, you have the full library settings, including the advanced settings with allow management of content types, templates, all these things. So that's good. In the site settings, there are some things that I want to show there that's not there. Let's go back to my IT team. And the site settings, one of the things that's not here is the uh, save site as a template. That's one of the things that you cannot do. So that might be interesting, but uh, most other things are possible in this site collection. You can also connect this group to Microsoft Teams. That's another thing that's connected to it. And also back and forth here, uh, there's more connectors here to the planner. And there's another link to the site, which gets you back there. So that concludes my demo on the web-based bits. Let's continue with the Outlook bits. So I'm going to go into Outlook 2016. And um, now I'm, of course, logged in to Outlook with the same account that I'm using for my Office 365 here. And there you see I got the email because I put that setting in there that all conversations should reach my email also. If I go into Groups here and expand that, You'll see that I have an email here, an unread email. I also can see both those reminders that I put in. So that's the conversations and the calendar. And there I have the link to the files and the notebook and both those open in the browser. Don't want to go into that again, but um, as you see, both of those open in the browser. I can also create a new group directly here from inside Microsoft Outlook. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the app that is called Outlook Groups, both in the Google Play and in the iTunes app stores. So let's search for that. Google search for Outlook Groups. There we go. And we see that app that you can install on your iOS device. And if I go back and search for that on the Play Store instead, it should get me directly to the Android app. I've already installed that app on my, um, my Android device. So let's go in and take a look at how that looks there. There's my device. Here, as you see, I have the Groups app on my Android device. So I'm going to stop, start that now. And as you see, I can see the list of my joined groups. I'll go into the IT team and I get a bit of tips there. So as you see, I have the appointments here, the test two that was in the calendar. And I also see the discussions and I can go in and reply to that discussion and just say sure there. And that gets added, of course, into the conversation, which is stored on my SharePoint site. Let's go back and here I see the files that go in there and uh, that doesn't open them in a new browser or anything and it opens them directly in here. So if I open that document, it opens up with Excel on my device. I'll allow that for now. Of course, I need to sign in here also. Now that I've entered my email address and my password, I can open that file in um, Excel also on my Android device. So there I see all the data. And um, I can even go in and edit this, and it will save it back to SharePoint. So let's just add some information here. Let's there and save that. I already is auto-saving, so that should already be saved. 
So I'm out of that on my device and now I'm switching back to my SharePoint site. And look, let's look, open that file. And there's the change that I just did and I even have the same cell selected. So that uh, worked on my device and that's saving back. And since this is stored in SharePoint, I can also go in on the site here. And if I go into my documents, I can check this uh, file and see the version history that it was indeed updated a few seconds ago by me. And that would of course work if there were several users logged in also. All right, so we have seen how we can access our groups from our mail, both in the Outlook web app and in the Outlook client. And we've also seen how we can view the group in the Outlook-based UI and how we can move over into the site, which is a SharePoint-based UI. And finally, we did a, a view also of it on my device. So we showed quite a lot in that demo, but I'm sure you'll find that um, groups is a really powerful thing that you can um, get a lot of work done in. Thank you for watching this demonstration.